Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the HubSpot Community Developer Show. I am your host, Dennis, and I am joined by a rowdy crew here. We got Mark Riba, Director of Development for Smart Bug Media, also an avid darks player. I believe you actually have a podcast. Is that correct? Am I right on that? Yes, I, I was producing it. Um, I am no longer, but yes, I, I do also handle, or I did handle production of a podcast for our online uh, online Dart League. So if you're interested in that, that's uh, fodartleague.com, completely separate from uh, from the Smart Bug Media plugs I'm sure I'll have later. Um, yeah, it's a fun time. We, uh, we, stream, we stream webcam darts on Twitch, and uh, yeah, it's about 50 of us uh, throwing darts right now. Awesome. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely plug that later on. I think it'll probably be the highlight of the show. Uh, we also got a guy named Doug Osborne. I had never officially met Doug, Doug until, uh, just a little under a month ago where I put out a question in uh, our dev slack and he kindly responded. I got to meet him, uh, via the zoom. I don't meet people in person anymore. So I was zoomed. Uh, Doug is a creative engineer at Epsilon and a purveyor of developer experience on the marketing mm. website team. That sounds nice. <laughs> it's self-proclaimed career of developer experience, but <laughs> that's, uh, that's what I love doing. Yeah. Awesome. How are you, how are you doing? I'm fantastic. And yeah. it, it's, uh, it's my first time meeting a couple of you in person, but I feel like we're old friends on the, uh, the HubSpot Slack channel. So. Yeah. Isn't that weird? I, I, I still just can't get over that sometimes. I, I've known, uh, Mark and John for years. I mean. What happened? Years and years and years. It seems like like my oldest friends now. I, let's. I'm I'm not that. I'm a dork. I'm sorry. I don't have any friends <laughs> in real life. Uh, <laughs> lastly, I'm going to bring in John McLaren. You guys know him, senior developer advocate at HubSpot, knower of all things, the encyclopedia of all Hubble tags. John, how are you doing, sir? Uh, good. Now I'm intimidated by the the title of knower of all Hubble tags. Now <laughs> <laughs> there will be a pop quiz but later. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, weather, by the way, uh, we got two mid Midwesterners and we have, uh, two East coast sets. Mark, you're in the DC area. Yes, sir. And how was the weather for you? Great. Well, it was crazy hot. And then, uh, then we got a crazy couple of, uh, thunderstorms in the last 24 hours. So, uh, saw everything from, yeah. uh, from some hail, some pretty serious wind. Um, but just happy to be back below a hundred degrees again. Um, I don't Seriously. even know, I don't even know what it was with the humidity, but, um, yeah, yeah. it's just yeah. that time of year where I just stay inside. I'm more of a winter person. I know. Yeah. I, I, uh, I look at my pedometer on my phone here and I am like below 2000 steps or something like that for the day, which is unusual for me. Um, also, yeah, we have one of those, uh, weather systems in our yard and I, I didn't trust it because the heat index was saying something like 137 or something crazy like that. It's like, no, 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 no. This can't be right. Yeah. No DC uh, in the summertime for, uh, for any tourists, you know, it's like walking through Sioux. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Seriously. Uh, Doug, you, you and, uh, John are in the Midwest to so Chicago and, uh, wait, wait, where are you? I always forget this, John, you're in Milwaukee area. Milwaukee area. Yep. Yeah. 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 Cool. And then it's perfect for you guys. I was in Kansas just, um, last week and I'm just going to, we're not going to talk about HubSpot stuff at all. This is going to be me <laughs> going back to my, my, my farmer. I'll, I'll probably have to call this out because it's, yeah. People are going to say, why am I here? Darts and uh, weather. I'm going to, I'll stop talking about it. All right. All right. Uh, let's get on to a few announcements. Um, uh, John, I'm going to rely on you quite a bit on this one because it's it, it's kind of heavy hitting here. You got Styles Field in beta. You you want to go ahead and just uh, walk through all these announcements we have here? Yeah, absolutely. So we just released uh, Style Fields into beta, and basic gist is that they are fields that you can add to the Styles tab in the page editor uh, for marketers and content creators to use. Uh, along with this, we also released some new fields. Uh, that are only available as style fields, uh, such as a gradient field. Um, we are also uh, happy to announce that we have a beta for the uh, VS Code extension, where you can actually get the same Hubble linting that you're used to in the design manager, but in VS Code now. Uh, to nice. enable that, it's really easy. You just open up the VS Code extension 
uh, settings for the HubSpot, HubSpot extension and toggle on the beta features. Um, and then for marketplace providers, a uh, quick heads up, uh, a redesigned marketplace is coming uh, and it's going to better highlight your assets. And on top of that, uh, we are also adding some uh, provider experience improvements, including a new CLI command that uh, enables you to uh, run automated validation on your theme to ensure that you're meeting the marketplace requirements. Um, that command uh, is not a replacement for, for the manual review that we do, but it'll at least uh, prevent back and forth uh, that's unnecessary. So, and, and, and all to get of that these, beta, oh. go, go ahead. All these, oh. all of these. I was going to say, all of these were announced in the developer change log. Uh, so if you want more detail, head on over to the developer change log at developers.hubspot.com slash change log. Cool. Yeah, I'm just going to ask, like, for the uh, the CLI one, I mean, is there a, a method to get into this beta, or is it, is it just pretty straightforward? Yeah, so you actually need to use the beta version of the CLI. Uh, so mm -hmm. you would mm -hmm. install that, um, and we have instructions in the changelog announcement for that. Beautiful. All right, let's talk about what we came here to talk about, folks. Uh, we are going to be talking about local web development. And... That I know is a pretty broad topic. I kind of want to talk about history of it because I was just thinking about the other day about what local development was to me about 15, 12 years ago, something like that. It was me working on an HTML file, uploading it to a server with FileZilla and hitting refresh in my browser. Is, it, is this consistent with everyone? Yeah. Wait, you don't do yep. that anymore? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fail-proof. Uh, yeah. Um, and now, I mean, you... There's classes taught basically on, you know, how to do local development. I mean, it's, the, the progress has just been crazy. I mean, you even get like a PhD sometimes to get through like a webpack configuration. Um, Mark, I'm going to start with you. Can you just kind of like tell me about your evolution of, and this is HubSpot, this is platform agnostic, you know, like how your evolution of, uh, you know, local development. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, I first cut my teeth uh, actually in college building my first websites um, on WordPress. And so, yeah, very used to the whole like cowboy coding kind of deal where, mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you have your your local files and you're just kind of essentially, um, you know, essentially having really FileZilla like almost watch a directory and then whenever you save something, have to go over and hit yes every single file. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> and then it would yes. go up. Yeah. And you just prayed that you didn't have a PHP error or missing a semicolon or something and just mm -hmm. got a white mm -hmm. screen of death, right? Um, and that was for developing sites. But then, you know, God forbid you actually need to maintain a site and push something new on a production one. Um, mm -hmm. And then you run into some some kind of error, right? Um, so definitely was very familiar with, uh, with that kind of workflow. And then, uh, once I moved up to my professional career, started working on HubSpot. Um, I even remember the days very, very faintly. Um, and I made a, a quick post in the Slack this morning. I can't remember if it's, uh, or I don't know if this is nostalgia or just via PTSD. Um, <laughs> but, uh, very first version of the HubSpot CMS, uh, you know, where you could really only change things with like one JavaScript embed in the top of the, uh, in the top of the head. And you had to essentially write all of your elements to get injected in on page load. Um, I remember that, but really, you know, HubSpot development for the longest time for me, I've been on the, the platform for about seven years now. Mm -hmm. um, it really was centered, uh, all your development was pretty much centered in the actual web app itself, right? So be right, it that right. version one uh, of the CMS or when the cause rolled out, um, you know, I remember being in the room, I believe they announced it like the very first developer day where they announced FTP for cause everyone's mind was blown, right? Like, mm -hmm. oh my God, mm -hmm. we can actually like do anything on our local machine and, and get it zipped up. Um, and then fast forward to today and, um, we actually, you know, uh, one of the first things that, that I did when I, um, came into my role as director, um, was, you know actually get all of our development team used to working locally exclusively. Cause we did have, you know, as a, as an agency, our size, we had a lot of legacy code that uh, mm -hmm. was built in the visual builder, um, you know, that kind of thing. So most of our team was used to working in the cloud DM. Um, but now that, you know, we have all these improvements in the last like two years around the developer experience, having the CLI, having, uh, the opportunity to, you know, 
uh, work outside of that visual builder framework and not have to go straight into just like static HTML sites, right? So we were doing that and for it, a long time it. too. Um, it's really opened up the world for us, uh, both in terms of um, just the flexibility and the, the way that we're able to build and building more performance sites, uh, as well as being able to take advantage of all the features that are available in a uh, local dev workflow. Cool. Uh, I'll throw the same question over to you, Doug. Whoa. Tell me about you, your history. Yeah, well, I'm, uh, I actually come from a design background. Um, I've always kind of been developing on the side, but yeah, I, I was definitely uh, around in the days of developing in Dreamweaver and using, uh, I actually, yeah. I'm a fan of Transmit FTP, but um, yeah, As just, am I. Uh, I Convoy CodeNet. Yeah, I, I, I love Trend, but, um, but yeah, I'm much newer to the, uh, the HubSpot scene. Um, I joined the Epson team a little over two years ago. Um, but yeah, same, same kind of a deal where we were primarily developing in the browser. Um, and I came in, I, I was hired on as about the fourth developer essentially on the, uh, dedicated to the web development team. And, um, so one of my goals and, uh, I, I was possibly given the opportunity to help improve our developer experience. Uh, so I, it, the timing was perfect because as Mark said, it was right around the time where, uh, HubSpot started releasing a lot of, uh, tools in order to develop locally. Um, so mm -hmm. like when that CLI came out, that was like, that was night and day. Like we were able to, uh, do kind of everything we were dreaming about, <laughs> uh, once that happened. Yeah. I, I I'm just curious to so both of you, like when the CLI was announced and I do want to talk about other things other than the HubSpot CLI, cause I think it's, a, it's such a big topic, but like when, when it came out, where did your heads go? Like what, how, how did you start rethinking how you wanted to interface with, uh, you know, web development? I mean, was it just like a, okay, we can do whatever we want now, or did you have a specific, like, okay, we'll do the bare bones right now, figure it out. You know, uh, Mark, Doug, either one of you talk to me about that. Yeah, well, um, we kind of already had an idea of, of what we wanted to do. And shortly before I started, we were also, our team was placed under engineering. So we were kind of being held to a higher standard of coding. Um, so we kind of already had like an ideal of what we wanted to do. And we had, um, experimented with some things with like the local server and FTP, and we were able to do some cool stuff with FTP, but it wasn't really until, uh, the CLI came out that we were able to really get a nice, uh, local workflow going. Didn't it? Mark? Yeah. yeah. Um, it was a really interesting kind of period for me because I, I had just gotten to Smartbug around the same time that the, the CLI originally came out. Um, and, it, and actually where I was at my previous agency, uh, we actually took this step. And, uh, as I said before, we were coding everything, uh, as, uh, HTML layouts already previously. Um, so I was very used to kind of doing that and building in my field directly. Um, because of that previous agency, we weren't really um, we didn't build sites as one, one op projects, right? Uh, every one of the sites we built was part of an inbound retainer relationship. And, and so we had a little bit more control over the, over the design of the site. Right. Um, with smart bug, obviously we work on, you know, kind of a, 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 a really big scale. And so we try to follow things, uh, kind of as close to HubSpot's, um, I don't, I don't know what the right word is. I don't want to say, uh, you know, Hub, HubSpot Bible or anything like that, but, um, you know, <laughs> kind of the way that, that you guys prescribe to, to build sites and the way that they should be edited. Um, so with that being said, we were building sites still on the visual builder because that's what, um, yeah, users were used to. And that's also what, uh, our marketers were used to using. So when the CLI first came out, it actually took us a little bit to kind of adopt it. Mm -hmm. And we were trying to figure out exactly where it fit, uh, because we had such kind of a rigid process, right? Um, so now, uh, you know, fast forward a few months, uh, where it really started opening up doors for us was in kind of bulk file management, um, as well as when themes finally came out, that was kind of the, all right, we, we have to go in. Right. Um, right, right. and it really made, you know, kind of migration of assets a lot easier being able to bulk, bring down things, um, and optimize them and watching them was huge. Yeah. Um, so that definitely uh, impacted it, but I still remember when it first came out, my mind immediately went to, um, you know, kind of even before the whole child themes thing was being talked about in HubSpot, like being able to maintain a code base, right? In a Git repo, yeah, yeah. bring it down, deploy it, 
but still have it backed by version control in you know, yes. a tool that's actually built for it. Um, so that was where my mind first went. And then we, uh, since we have adopted it here at Smartbug, so all of our projects yeah. are backed by Git. That's, yeah, I, I was thinking about when you're talking about how your evolution of, you know, local workflow and mm -hmm. the vi FileZilla, and I, I think you're kind of speaking almost like you're a sole developer, right? This is with, you're not working on IT, because that's a whole other aspect that just complicates it to the nth degree. And that's where just, I think version control is probably the most important aspect of any of this, right? I and mean, in my opinion, I mean, I, I like being able to code locally. It's nice. It's really, it's, it's pleasant. But version control, just, I think that's the game changer in my opinion. I don't know. John, can you, um, heck, hi, uh, tell me about your evolution. <laughs> with, with, I have not asked you this question yet, but yeah, your, your evolution with uh, local workflows, generally speaking. Uh, yeah, I would say I followed a very similar path to, to Mark, especially, um, when it came to, I guess when I first like started out with development and everything, I actually sort of went in a weird path because, uh, I first built my first website when I was eight years old. So a weird fun fact, but, uh, uh, it went terrible by the way, but, uh, and had font takes galore and everything. So don't worry. Uh, I've, I've gotten a little bit better, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but so that at that time, the interesting part of it is it started out uh, web-based and then I worked again, I learned FTP right after that mm -hmm. and started actually producing uh, client stuff from that. Uh, so, uh, then got started with HubSpot, same, same experience as Mark overall was fully in the design manager. Um, I was also doing WordPress projects too. Uh, and I was using FTP for, for creating most of those. Um, and I did like the ability to, uh, to have version control with the WordPress projects and was trying to emulate that with HubSpot projects. And they did until FTP, uh, became a thing on HubSpot and then now the COI, uh, it was, it was a lot harder to do version control that way, but now right. with the COI, it's pretty fast and easy. I'm curious, you, you, have, you manage a lot of portals as well when you're in the agency life. How, how did you transition when it came to the CLI? Cause I remember I, my experience, it was kind of confusing. I didn't know what to do. Honestly, it's like, this is going to, there's a lot of upfront work to get this all set up. And uh, I'm just curious, John, how did you go about it? So, uh, when CLI first came out, one of the the hurdles that there was for me at first was that you had to use an API key for everything. It, it, uh, but it, we it. changed that by releasing the, uh, personal access keys. And so at first there was that kind of like initial, like every time you need to work on a new account, it's going to take you like five minutes to get set up. Um, once personal access keys became a thing and the CLI commands got, uh, much more fluid and and better where you, you just literally go, uh, HS, uh, uh, off. And then all of a sudden, uh, it goes, all right, hit one button to open the browser window to, uh, yeah. to set your permissions for your access token. Uh, mm -hmm. that was a game changer. Um, uh, and very quickly I was able to get set up with a lot of different accounts at once. So initially I was probably using it for just the biggest projects that I had and then uh, now everything I, I do is with, uh, the CLI. Cool. Um, Doug, how, what, what, what are all, what's all involved? Can you just walk us through what your local workflow looks like? You know, no, no secret sauce if you don't want to put that in there, but you know, whatever you can <laughs> detail. No, all good. Um, so it, it was kind of an evolution. Um, the, like I said, the, the CLI kind of enabled us to do, uh, whatever we wanted before I was at Epsilon, um, I was agency side, so we had all sorts of different builds. So I had a pretty good idea of what I wanted to do with the HubSpot build. Um, and then once CLI came out, um, we started, um, uh, initially it was a, uh, a gulp build. Um, so mm -hmm. the, uh, kind of the structure that HubSpot requires for like your module files, I thought, uh, gulp really lettered itself nicely to kind of maintaining that, but giving us mm -hmm. the power to like use. SAS and Babel and, um, 
pretty much any kind of transpiling or image um, optimization or et cetera, et cetera, that we needed. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, we started small with that um, and then we eventually kept building on top of that. Um, with um, with the CLI, the, it made all that a lot easier. Like we were kind of able to do some stuff with FTP, um, but, but not exactly. So w once that came out, it was, like I said, perfect timing for me because we were really starting to ramp up um, all of our local capabilities. Um, so now fast forward uh, to um, a, a few months ago, we just lost a, or uh, we just uh, launched a redesign, uh, which we did completely with uh, React components. So we actually have, um, it's still, our build is still based in Gulp um, because we still have Gulp uh, controlling our main like module template file structure. Uh, but then we have Webpack layered on top of that um, and all of our React components and piping those through. And we, we followed a, a structure that's similar to the um, the React boilerplate that uh, mm -hmm. HubSpot has out there. Um, mm -hmm. And we, we've just continued to um, layer on features on top of that based on, on what we need. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, been a great experience having the opportunity to, uh, continue to evolve this, um, mm -hmm. and looking forward to, uh, what else HubSpot has in store for us in the future. Yeah. I'm curious, you and, you and, uh, you guys have two different, you're, you're, you're Mark, you're an agency, Doug, you work for a company. So it seems, I mean, I imagine your strategies are totally different here. I'm, I'm curious to, uh, like, Doug, I guess you get to iterate, right? You just keep on building on top of that. Mark, you gotta be fast. You gotta be agile. Your, your project changes day to day, right? So hey, work with that. Tell me everything, Mark. You, I'm sure you have words to say. I have many words to give you Dennis. Um, yeah, no, we have, uh, so it really depends. Um, and I know that we, uh, you know, I, I know we're going to talk about kind of different, different tools for, for different projects. Right. Um. And for us, it's a really interesting uh, situation because we launch three to four websites a month, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we're building sites at a, at a pretty quick rate. We're working with a team of, um, we have 10 people on our team right now. Uh, two of those are, are QA specialists. Um, and then beyond that too, you know, we, we try to make ourselves as, uh, as much of a, um, or as close of a partner uh, to HubSpot as we can. So when it comes to what we're committing to get um, and really just kind of how we approach our website projects right now, we try and keep it to the book as much as possible. Um, and, and, and we do that because number one, it's more scalable for us um, when we bring on new developers, right? So if they had to come in and learn a whole build system and get onboarded with um, you know, getting their, their environment set up, all that kind of thing, um, you know, that, that introduces its own little bit of friction. But then even beyond that, um, when it comes to maintaining a website over time, we also don't want to necessarily lock any of our clients in um, right. to some kind of build tool or something else that requires a local machine to run. Um, so that being said, it, it's a very kind of unique situation where we allow each of our developers to kind of figure out their own individual build system. Uh, but then mm -hmm. what actually gets committed to code is already compiled. Um, and we do that for for the reasons I just mentioned, uh, mostly partially readability as well um, mm -hmm. to make mm -hmm. sure that anyone, if they do have to be onboarded or, or maintain a project down the line, that uh, everything is kind of in a predictable place. Um, mm -hmm. But also, again, yeah, just making sure that uh, once we do hand off this uh, this website, be it to our marketing team, if our inbound marketers are are assisting a uh, an organization with their their growth efforts, um, or if we're just handing it over to the client and their content team, we want to make sure that we are um, we aren't gate gatekeepers in any way, right? So we're really mm -hmm. putting the mm -hmm. marketer first in that uh, in that regard. Uh, that being said, for our actual um, for our actual process, some of us it, it really kind of runs the gamut. Um, I've had a very extensive gulp file before, uh, probably similar to um, uh, to others out there, but, um, we also didn't want to get into a situation where we're spending more time on our, on our build file than we are actually developing. Right. Uh, so yeah, yeah. some of our developers have one that they've used for, for a long time. Some of us just kind of use, um, and I've honestly, uh, in recent months been falling more into this camp where I just use a lot of VS code plugins to kind of handle my, um, like, uh, mm -hmm. compilation directly in the software. 
Um, and again, just making sure that I can commit uh, compiled clean code already back. So I'll use everything from, I'm a big Pug fan. So I write a lot of my yeah. uh, my code in Pug or, uh, or Emmet. Mm -hmm. um, SCSS, uh, Babel, as mentioned. Uh, but that being said, yeah. also, if we do build anything with React or Vue, uh, we're using that boilerplate and we're using some additional uh, Webpack plugins as well. I'm a big fan of Post CSS personally. Uh, mm -hmm. They handle mm -hmm. a lot of those kind of things, convert pixel values to RAM automatically, uh, things like yeah. that. Um, so yeah, uh, it, it kind of depends on the project, but uh, yeah, we can kind of run the game. Yeah. How, how much are you investing in terms of just uh, keeping up with technologies? Just, I mean, the, you can... And I put this in notes there, like it's, it's a rat hole, right? I mean, you can, you can spend years and as you do it, something else comes out, right? You know, it's how much time are you spending doing that? Yeah. So it really, it kind of rolls. Um, my, the, the guiding principle that I've used to this point is looking at kind of where the market is. So for example, um, I take a lot of inspiration personally from Gatsby, uh, just working in that yeah. on uh, kind of side projects. Uh, mm -hmm. I love the developer experience in, in that kind of workflow. And so we try to make that as similar as natural, um, on our end, both in terms of performance that we ultimately get out of it, but also just the time it takes from, you know, start, get pull or whatever, uh, mm -hmm. to actually mm -hmm. pushing it into production. Um, so I keep my eye on, on tools like that. Uh, I'm a big fan in general of kind of the Jamstack headless yep. serverless space. Um, so a lot of the, the tools that I end up kind of experimenting with come from there. Um, but again, always making sure that it fits into a HubSpot first workflow. Um, so yeah, we'll experiment with Grunt, we'll experiment with Gulp, post CSS, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. um, a lot of image optimization tools. That's probably the, the number one thing that we do in terms of kind of local compute power is, uh, mm -hmm. automating our, uh, optimization of images. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's just kind of keeping an eye on the industry, seeing what tools we can pick up and, and integrate. For example, I saw you guys posted something on a Git, um, GitHub Copilot this morning. So I'm already thinking about how can we, how can we integrate that? Um, yeah, yeah. Little things like that, but primarily that's all built kind of into R and D time, um, before we can really kind of make a case and incorporate it into our standard processes. John, what about you? How do you focus? How do you not go down? the various rabbit holes. I think you have, you know, you're better at this. You're, you're more disciplined than I am. So I think my job position makes this a little unique in that my, my, my job is no longer in like Mark's shoes where I, I previously was. Uh, and now I am focused a lot on what is happening like months to years down the road and thinking about, yeah, they um, where tooling and everything is going to be. Uh, at the same time, uh, the projects that I do actually work on, uh, on the CMS, uh, you'll, you'll, you would find that my approach is very kind of conservative, uh, when it comes to build tools, uh, right now. Um, so the reason for it is because anything I create, I want someone else to be able to pick up. Yeah right yeah. away and know exactly how things work. There's nothing wrong at all with using, uh, different tools. I, I think you should always pick the right tools and the right amount of tools for the project that you are working on. Um, uh, John, I think you give that answer every <laughs> podcast I end with you. It's <laughs> Sorry, I think yeah, that's I'm a turning into a cliche. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Doug, how do we, how do we um, set people up for success? If like, let's say you are hit by a bus, God forbid, uh, <laughs> how, how is it, how is, you know, Joe Schmo here come in there and take over your, your build process? Well, we try to maintain uh, a wiki, um, with instructions on how everything's architected and how to use everything, um, mm -hmm. as clearly as possible and, um, as detailed as possible. Um, and whenever we add on a feature, we try to do it in a way where it's, it's easy to pick up. So as long as you're using the build, like we have a lot of, like, basically we have a gulp task for that. <laughs> um, so <laughs> anything you need to do, um, we're, we're building it in a way that it's easy to use. Um, because there, on my team, there's only one or two developers that actually work on kind of the, the build part of it. The others are using the build to focus more on the web development part of it. And then um, so it, it is really important for us, uh, to document and, um, uh, do the wikis, do the readmes, 
uh, so and that it, somebody it, else can just jump in and uh, interchangeably uh, take our job. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mark, have you ever just um, taken our project that has some sort of, you know, it's using grunt back there or something like that. And, and do you, do, do you keep it as is, or, or would you re-engineer it to go into a more modern workflow that you would prefer? I mean, what's, I guess, what's the time benefit? Yeah, it can really, you know, it can run the gamut. Um, I will say we have not inherited a site yet that actually was backed by version control, where it's kind of obvious that, um, you know, there is an actual build system that you can run it through. More often than not, we're getting a site that's already, like I mentioned, already run through a compiler and all that we're working with is pre-minified and pre-optimized code that's really hard mm -hmm. to iterate on, right? Yeah. Um, so usually what we'll do is we'll, we'll service it as much as we can, usually, you know, writing just net new code. Uh, we don't try to mm -hmm. go back in and, and maintain something that's already been minified and kind of abstracted beyond the ability for us to, uh, yeah. really read it and, and figure out what's going on. Um, and yeah, usually what we'll do is, uh, honestly, we'll just kind of, well, we'll maintain it as much as we can. And eventually mm -hmm. we reach a point where it's just like, you know, guys, we need to kind of start from scratch. Um. Because yeah, and that's kind of, again, that's kind of why we've guided ourselves to this point, um, where we allow our, our developers to use build tools where they make sense, but, um, and yeah, it, we don't want to handicap anyone down the road and that's traditionally been our experience. Right. And then John, to, to your point earlier about using like the, basically the, the simplest thing possible. So what, what are your thoughts on like, you know, uh, you know, modern JavaScript, you know, ES6 or, or like, you know, SCS, SAS files, things like that, that have to be compiled and. Most, I mean, you know, CSS is making such headways in terms of what it does. It's almost the relevancy of SAS is, I, in my opinion, questionable at this point. Uh, I think it's still there, still useful in some places, but slow and quickly, I think CSS is taking over, but I digress. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, when it comes to like writing ES6 JavaScript and beyond and everything I right now, browsers browser support is pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, we just, uh, announced, uh, actually I'm going to scrap that. I don't know if we did. <laughs> we did. <laughs> we did. We did. Okay, good. Yes. We announced that we are sunsetting support for internet explorer, uh, HubSpot wide. Uh, so the, I'm going to, I want to verify that we actually announced this and there might be a cut at this point, but I'm pretty sure it was announced. <laughs> it would be news to me, but we stopped supporting it last year. So, <laughs> well, I will talk as if I didn't say it, but, uh, but, uh, uh, depending on if you need to support internet explorer, uh, that's the main concern with using it modern JavaScript. Uh, most of the new browsers auto updates and most of them all support, uh, the majority of the functionality. I think the only JavaScript, uh, features that modern JavaScript features that are not fully supported are imports and exports of JavaScript modules. Mm -hmm. Um, so the, the good news there is you may not need, uh, something like Babel, um, there may be perks to using some of the tools for other mm -hmm. purposes, like just like, for example, like SAS, uh, I enjoy writing SAS personally, mostly just for the nesting functionality. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. when it comes nesting to, times. yeah, but when it comes to variables and when it comes to, uh, a lot of the, the other functionality, you either can reproduce that with uh, modern CSS now using custom properties, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. or, uh, Hubble has baked in, uh, functionality that's equivalent. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, I, yeah. I, we, I went myself towards, uh, keeping things lighter if I can, so that later on down the road, if I need to re pick up a project or, or I have to pass a project off to somebody. Uh, they're not going, oh man, like I'm inheriting a project that's on version one point whatever of this tool and 1.2 of this tool and having to mm -hmm. go through that scary situation of, can I even up update all of these things yeah. without something breaking? Right. Right. Definitely. Um, uh, how do you guys handle reloading? I, I someone, and I think, uh, someone at Slack asked this question, asked 
I said asked, asked this question. Uh, do you guys have methods of just doing some sort of live reload with your, uh, with your files? Live reload. <laughs> um, so we, we use, um, part of our go build is, uh, after the files compile and the uploads complete, it triggers uh, a live reload. So there's a Chrome extension that works in conjunction with that. So you turn that on, uh, the go build triggers anything with that extension active to reload. Um, so mm -hmm. it's almost as good as just a, a hot reload. Cool. And wow. honestly, we use the built-in HubSpot one right now. Um, so we'll watch a, uh, um, a page or a, or a module file, um, using the hey. live reload one. But again, it's, um, yeah, we're, we're kind of leaving it up to the developer's discretion. I honestly like hitting command or command or control R isn't, you know, that big a deal for me. So I usually do that. And honestly, like I find that it, it encourages me to work on, you know, as many styles or bugs, whatever it is in my and code it, and once it, and then preview it. Um, yeah. so yeah, it really, when we're working on a team, you know, kind of like ours, it, we try to empower our developers as much as we can to kind of uh, be able to create the, the workflow they mm -hmm. want to use. Um, no one on our team, uh, for HubSpot at least has done, um, has done live reload. We will sometimes with, uh, with WordPress, uh, depending mm -hmm. on our, our situation, what starter theme we're using. Um, but yeah, right now, if you want to do that, then, uh, then we typically use the built-in HubSpot tool or honestly, um, a lot of the time I'll jump to code pen and do that. If I'm doing just a module development project, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, so I just have a starter built in there to allow me to use Pug, Babel, SCSS. Um, and then, if I need a framework, I'll, I'll load that in too. Um, but yeah, if I just need to kind of crank out something really quick, uh, in visual, I'll do that and then just hit the, uh, the button to view the compile code for each one, copy it over to my HubSpot and project it, and then upload from there. That seems like a similar method to you in the past, John, correct? I mean, you were, uh, get it, yeah, that's, put it together that's exactly what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I also did, uh, when, when I would create a, uh, new module. Like when I was first fleshing it out, I liked using CodePen to, to, it, to yeah. get to use all the build tools without any of the setup and then just jump uh, into be it. Able to, yeah. Then be able to just drop all of my finished code, uh, yeah. in, and then the advantage is anyone inheriting my project too. Also, again, not to just keep bringing it back to that, but then they're not sitting there, uh, setting up any tools. They just have the right. raw code. Yeah, I was, I was talking to uh, Tim Joyce earlier today, and he's he's got a setup where he brings it into a PHP file, and he has a uh, a live reload set to that. It's Tim for you though. He's he he over engineers anything. He also is uh he's happy with the uh, the VS Code extension as well, which is interesting. Ooh, cool. to, nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, what? How? This is something I personally am a fan of. It's GUI systems. I'm I'm just curious to know what you guys think. We talked about FileZilla Transmit earlier. Do you, everything we've talked about so far after that has been pretty much in a file, right? Do you guys prefer to work that way through the CLI terminal and, and, you know, through a JSON pack, you know, whatever it might be, or, or do you guys like to turn to like, for me, for, I personally like tower, you know, to do all my, my get work. I, I don't mind doing it from the command line, but I feel better, more confident with something like tower. Doug, what's, what, how are you uh, handling things like that? Yeah, we're in a bit bucket, so we actually use uh, source tree. When I'm in it, my personally, I'm a big fan of just doing most everything in terminal. Uh, but whenever it comes to something complicated, like looking at a uh, commit history or um, anything like that, um, I love yeah. the the more visual approach of uh, looking at source tree, so I can better wrap my head around like a history behind something. Yeah, I, I just personally like I I may, I'm just getting old. I don't have time to memorize all the damn things out there that I need to do. <laughs> all the commands, you know, there's so many of them. And, and HubSpot, for example, keeps on coming up with these new ones. I got to memorize here and there. Uh, Mark, what about you? Yeah, so we, um, we kind of use a combo. Um, so we, in our documentation, technically we only document everything out for our, uh, for our process using GitHub desktop um, as a way mm -hmm. to pull down and, and manage your projects that way. However, increasingly, we're also using a plugin for VS Code that um, I believe it's just called like GitHub Issues or something like that, um, that actually connects with you, authenticate with GitHub, it'll go up and it'll bring down your active issues as well as let you create new ones. 
And then uh -huh. Uh -huh. by clicking on the issue, it'll cr automatically create the new branch. So that's actually been really helpful for us um, to oh, kind of cool. do that uh, directly in the code editor. So it's kind of a hybrid where like, you know, it's not quite a full GUI. Um, it's still Didn't within he? the code editor, uh, but it kind of puts everything into one place. And frankly, I know it probably isn't, great practice going forward, but VS code seems to be stable enough that as many, you know, kind of plugins or efficiencies I can find within my code environment, I try and put it in, uh, in VS yeah, code. Yeah. I'm curious, uh, just in terms of like, uh, tips here, what, what, what extensions do you guys recommend? Generally speaking, I know what John's going to, John, what do you recommend for a VS code extension? The HubSpot language extension. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, what, what, what do you got? Yeah, bringing it up now. Um, I also will say for any HubSpot developers on um, on Windows, WSL for Windows is crucial for our for our process. So that essentially lets you uh, install a Linux distro on top of Windows, so you don't have to like learn the command prompt stuff versus a, uh -huh. a standard Unix terminal. Uh, so all of my HubSpot development on Windows is actually technically in Ubuntu. Um, but it still, you know, functions like a regular app, that kind of thing. Um, in terms of my extensions, looks like I have a beautify one. Um, I have the HubSpot extension, obviously. I do also have the Jinja extension, um, did it, did it. which is still in version 0 0.008, but has 2.3 million installs. So probably, probably safe to, to, uh, be using mm -hmm. in production. Um, use some remote SSH ones, uh, twig as well, um, as we do use twig in our, uh, in our WordPress projects to make it as similar to, to HubSpot as possible. Um, and then some, uh, some extra stuff for, um, I, I have a Docker one for kind of side projects and, and messing around with Docker as well as, uh, syntax highlighting for view and react. Cool. Doug, what do, what do you got? Tell us everything. Nice. Oh, a lot of the same. Um, I use Prettier for my code formatter. Um, and we do, we've got a, uh, uh, commit handle so that everyone is on like the exact same formatting, which is nice. Uh, cause that was a, kind of a big issue for us up front. Um, and one that no one has mentioned yet is the Jira plugin, which is kind of nice because you can, uh, right near in VS code, create tickets and kind of comments and, uh, in line where that did it applicable uh ticket needs to uh get action on it nice and just out of curiosity your terminals are you oh my z as speeching it or do you guys have a different flavor that you use and if you're using oh my zsh i want everyone's theme i need screenshots of your themes right now <laughs> no it's okay <laughs> oh my I'm not, I'm not big on the whole uh you know customized terminal thing so i actually just use uh like i said ubuntu bash um directly in vs code um but Boring. Yeah, I know. sorry, but it works. <laughs> Doug, you're a designer. You have to have a little flash <laughs> going on. Yeah, we got, we got a little, little mizish going on. Uh, nothing too fancy. Just, just a little, uh, a little bit of a colored prompt with the, uh, uh like the, uh, get branching and stuff like that. I, one of my favorite things I have on there is a, it, it, I have this, uh, just a quote, a random quote that comes up every time I launch, watch it, which I enjoy. That's cool. Um, <laughs> I'm going to steal all of these things. I'm going to put in the show notes for everyone to steal. Um, we will not take a screenshot of Mark's terminal because it's boring. Um, <laughs> if you were to recommend to people who might have gotten this far into our podcast, um, what are the minimum, what's the MVP, minimum viable product for uh, a workflow, right? A local workflow. Uh, I will start with John. <laughs> I'm going to suggest to be possibly the most minimal you can go, <laughs> but, 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 uh, CLI, uh, I recommend VS code. Um, and I would generally recommend Git in general. doesn't matter mm -hmm. if you're using it with a, with a GUI or, or any other method. Okay. Doug. I would 100% agree with that. I think the, the. By far the most important thing is to have version control. Um, so whatever you're doing, make sure it uses that. Um, and I think beyond that, it's, it's really up to your team and your needs. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so like, uh, having a, a front end, uh, library for us was kind of a big thing, um, because, uh, it's, it's really helped our design, uh, consistency. Um, I definitely wouldn't say that's a 
a bare minimum, but uh, if that's the direction your team needs to go, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. And Mark. Yeah. Hello, uh, friend. Similar deal. Um, so personally for me, some kind of Unix shell, um, or just a way to, you know, write, uh, write your commands in, in a Unix friendly way, be that Mac or Linux, um, node, obviously everyone needs node these days. Uh, HubSpot CLI VS code, I think is really the only way to go. I was a big Atom user for the longest time. I just got way too freaking slow. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, the, the plugins that I've mentioned, uh, the, the HubSpot, honestly, the, the VS code extension for me, uh, from HubSpot is a game changer. Like I, I, I don't know that I would be able to do local dev anymore <laughs> without that. Uh, just having all those snippets in there and like, you know, um, I've said it a few times, like writing D and D syntax kind of still puts my brain in a pretzel. So having that, um, <laughs> having the autocomplete there is, is absolutely crucial. Um. And yeah, uh, the, the GitHub stuff, having Git installed, um, that's really kind of the, the final piece of the puzzle. Um, but yeah. Cool. All right, guys. I think this has been a success. I, I think the last three people watching this, uh, will enjoy it. And, um, <laughs> you guys have a, a great rest of your I'm, day. Um, Thanks. Back at you guys. <laughs> Thanks for having me.